Let me pop open this. Go ahead and pop that. Oh, uh, is, is that spin drift? Is now? that coffee? Yeah. I'm glad you're drinking coffee. What time is it? 3.09. I'm good with that. Great. Good for I, you. I, need, good I, for I just you. need seven hours to get it out of my system. My cutoff's at four. I'm going to drink a lemon okay. spin drift. Great. Yeah. What time are you going Honestly, to bed? Brought to you by lemon spin drift. Brought to you by lemons. Lemons. You know, we're still a thing. Well, here we are, episode three. Yep. Of the uh, podcast. Yeah. Uh, Nailing so, it so far. Do you think we lost? What, what percentage of the audience do you think we lost after listening to those first two? We stuck in for 14 years of the show. Yeah. But after two episodes of the podcast, we're out. Yeah. <laughs> we're out. Yeah. It, it, many people are going to realize that they just don't give a shit about what we have to say. But that's okay. That's all right. We but might be well, ruining be... the show. Oh, this is a lot yeah. like the show where we're just talking all over each other. Well, how about this? For our listeners that are like, man, is this all they're going to do? They will be excited to hear. We have a guest today. That guest is Mr. Michael Jordan. So if you're a fan of basketball, turns out Michael Jordan's a big Sunny fan and... So stick around. Um, um, hey, guys. Are we Michael, gonna, Michael Jordan isn't here. Just are we? So. As, oh, he isn't? No. You son of a bitch. No, he's probably never seen the show. Uh, but I'm a fan. What about Michael B. Jordan? Can we get him? Also a fan. No, he, he's not available. Uh, we're not okay. going to get any of the Michael Jordans. He's not. Show. All right. No, that's no, fine. No, no. Listen, guys, are we ever going to do an introduction of some kind to this show? Are we just going to just launch right into it? There's never any like, hey, guys, welcome to the It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia podcast. It's great to have you here. We got another episode for you today. We're going to do episode three of season one. You know, or no, anything like no, that? No, because <laughs> you clicked on it. You know, you, you pulled it up. You clicked on it. If you don't know what you're listening to by now. Well, can I fire one off just in case we want to use it? You just did. You just did. I guess I did, didn't yeah. I? Yeah. Welcome to episode three of the It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia podcast. We got the whole cast here. We got Rob McElhenney. We got Charlie Day. We got Glenn Howerton. We do not have Caitlin Olson. We do not have Danny DeVito. So we don't have the whole cast, and that's okay. So basically, the premise of this whole thing is we just talk and 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 talk until you can't fucking stand us anymore. It took no time for that coffee to shoot right into your system. You took a sip and then immediately. Okay, Good. I'm glad you did it, though. Became gonna, the micro machine. You're going to be more fun. Last week, you were just talking about how tired you are. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, I'm still tired. It's both. It's both. It's, ma it's mania. Right. It, is, it is mania. I'm not tired today, though. We're getting a real, good. real good. good look into what this process so, is like. Uh, yeah. So we, we get into the writer's room. We spent, how long do we spend doing this crap before we actually start working on an episode of the show? For the people who are turning in because they're like, oh, we... we no, What's the process? You don't tune into a podcast. For people who are clicking on sure. because they uh, they really are curious about our process, mm -hmm. it's a lot of this. It is. It's a yeah. lot of this. It's 15, 16 years of this. It bears fruit. We have to create space for conversations that have nothing to do seemingly with the episode that we're trying to break, only to sometimes find something within that conversation, stories about what our day was like, what our weekend was like, what the morning routine was, what have you. It's probably why our later episodes are so much better than our earliest episodes where, mm -hmm. again, we were just trying to find the show, but we didn't spend a ton of time talking about them. We would just sort of discuss lightly and then just go write them. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Well, so I cannot recall. It was so long ago. I have yeah. no recollection of working on that episode. What, season one? Shooting it, yes, but like writing it? I don't remember writing it. Well, that's that. because, I mean, in those early seasons, we, we didn't even have offices. Our show was so cheap to make and our budget was so small that we didn't even know to ask for offices. You know, our line producer just kind of let that slide by because it helped him save money. So we were writing out of our apartments and out of our manager's office at Three Arts Entertainment. Till we got kicked out. Till we got kicked out of there because they mm -hmm. were sick of us. Mm -hmm. We were just drinking their coffee. I watched that episode, and I, I'm very annoyed by those people. I, I'm very annoyed by myself. Yeah, what's in up? That, in what's that up? What are, you, what are you feeling? Well, I just, I don't like that show. Hmm? I don't like that show, that, that one. I don't know. I don't, well, I wouldn't, like I wouldn't keep watching that show if that was the first episode. Oh, see, I, just, I like that. That's one of the, like, I, I actually like that. I remember, I, I remember liking it. Mm -hmm. I remember thinking, oh, this is really funny. I mean, again, this is with 2005 or something like that. Right. But I remember Caitlin being really funny. Oh, and I remember. God. Loving you, like what you guys, and the, the classic Tammy stuff is great. I yeah, remember feeling like we were sort of like hitting a stride with that episode, feeling as though, okay, this is clicking. 
even though it was the third episode we aired, it was one of the later episodes that were written. It was like maybe one, second to yes. last episode that was written. Oh, good uh, memory there. I don't recall that. Yeah, really. it was one of the- I remember writing it really quickly. Yeah. Yeah. And like all those names in there, they're but all- Those are all your high school, school buddies, buddies, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and we really did smash Nikki Potnik's car into a tree. Yeah. Can, can I clear yeah. something up for yeah. everybody like, once and for all? The waitress's name is not Nikki Potnik, so stop it. It just isn't. It doesn't even make any sense. That's a theory that's been out there for a really long time that I would like to dispel. The waitress's name is not Nikki Potnik. That it's is Picky Not Nick. <laughs> <laughs> it's close. It was kind of fun the way people kind of came up with that because there was yeah. the, there was the mm -hmm. episode where Danny takes the Nikki Potnik high school sticker. Yep. And then the waitress shows and the waitress up and, shows up and they don't have a tag. So people said, oh, they're doing a kind of a sneaky thing. But we're, we well, weren't no. that clever. No, yeah, actually. No. We, that we was just, a mistake. We just thought it was funny to bring back the idea of Nikki Potnik through having Frank put the sticker on. And then totally separate joke that had nothing to do with that was that even the people on the committee didn't know the waitress's name or forgot. Or like that's how, that's how fucking unmemorable she, she was to everyone. Yep. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> You brought up uh, Caitlin's drunk acting. As far as I'm concerned, she puts on a clinic in that episode for like comedic drunk acting. I mean, that shit is so, so fucking funny. I mean, that, that she really looks like, was she drunk? No, she wasn't. No, no, that's. I mean, that no. it's so real. No. It's so real. That's the kind of thing people ask a lot. Like, do you guys just get like drunk, like on the show all the time doing the scenes? And you're like, no, first of all, it's 7.30 in the morning on like a Wednesday. And you're doing that scene. And yeah. then you have to do five other scenes from different episodes, in which you may or may not be drunk. Then you have to drive home. We've definitely been drunk when we did, or at least I was drunk, when we did the live show. I remember being oh, yeah, pretty yeah, hammered yeah, when yeah, we were yeah, doing the live yeah, shows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what? But I couldn't get hammered doing the live show because I have such a tenuous oh. grasp on my own voice as it is that uh -huh. like, if I was drunk, I'd be like, I can't, my voice is gone. Uh, yeah, yeah I, I, was, I was getting pretty I hammered. Getting but, hammered yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But then, but then like, no, when we're shooting, I don't think I've, I've ever been drinking while we're no. Have oh, we? absolutely. No, 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 only, getting, no, only when the season like, is like it's the uh, last yeah. scene of the last. You yeah, know. there have been some other times too, but that's okay. We're, we're, we're just, we don't have to get into it. No, uh, I don't really don't even remember. <laughs> you really don't remember, or is it, you're not just making that up for no, liability really purposes? Not. No, no, okay, no. Yeah. What? There, uh, that's there. a sign of alcoholism, pal. <laughs> you can't remember. The I've fact got a, that a pretty good you memory. Blacked out about it. Well, I will say this: we, we it's not something that we've done in a very long time. It's some of those really early seasons. It would be like, oh, it's the last scene of the day. Yeah, we're drinking a beer in the bar. Let's just have one. Beer oh yeah, at the yeah, end of that. Yeah, I'm not talking yeah, about getting yeah. drunk. But I also remember actually in The Gang Gets Stranded in the woods, we were out shooting at night and we were out in the woods and I remember us going and getting a six pack and, and, oh, and drinking yeah. while we were shooting or, that or, or in Philly, I remember we, we would, yeah. yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah, actually, we have like a, we'd get a six pack to, to shoot one scene. Yeah, it wasn't that crazy. Yeah, you have like a beer or two, but you're not loaded. No. No, you get, you get a little bit looser and have a little fun because it's a night shoot and, you know, that's about it. But uh, no, we weren't getting hammered or anything like that. We should do that more, though, this season. Well, Season again, 15. You know, there's the alcoholic and you speaking, Rob. Yeah, 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 yeah there he is. is. Do we there need he to is. Uh, there. mention? He's, I, was there drinking, he is. I was drinking a beer with my grandma in the scene where I'm playing the piano with the red hat ladies in Philly. But we have so many episodes to talk about and and, and so much time. Well, let's, yeah. let's, stick let's to focus on this one. Sorry. So, Rob, I've got a question for you, yeah. okay. buddy, because it's a subject that comes up in this episode. Mm -hmm. Rob, why don't you tell us what Lemon Hill is? Lemon Hill is a real place in Fairmount Park in Philadelphia where we used to go to drink after school. Okay, tell us some good. By the way, I feel like I'm talking about my drinking quite a bit already. This that's might okay. be this that's might right. be a bit of an intervention. Hey, man, listen. Yeah, here it comes. Yeah, that's okay. So, that's Rob, right. so listen. Uh, uh, your no, drink Lemon Hill. We would, go, we would go there after after school, like on Fridays, and mm -hmm. the cops wouldn't bother us, and that's where. Oh, uh, so they so it was sort of known and understood, yeah. and as long as you guys kept it together and didn't, didn't yes. go super nuts, the cops just let it happen. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Wow. And then and then there would what, be. Sorry, like, was it a? It was just a park or what? Yeah, it was like an area in the park, and it would it overlooked the river it was actually quite beautiful oh. uh, the Schuylkill the, the Schuylkill River yeah but yeah, then there would Schuylkill be there, yeah. every once in a while there'd be a fight that would break out or something sure. some of kind course. of some kind sure. of violence sure. and sure. then the cops would come and be like all you have to do all you have to do is just not fight is not fight because then no one's going to get hurt but meanwhile everybody's getting in their cars and driving home so I don't know what the fuck they were thinking 
Nevertheless, I think they yeah. kind of felt like we were somewhat more responsible than it, this is the, in the middle of the city of Philadelphia. Right. I think they had other things. Yeah, that they, they were, were they, they were busy were with other things in, yeah. in the city of Philadelphia. Mm-hmm. There was other stuff yeah. going on. Yeah. That they I really found a dead body there. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Tell was, us about that. Yeah, that was yeah. Year, that was years <laughs> later. <laughs> Tell that about was that. years later, and that was what the cops, I'm assuming, were spending most of their time. Now, it, uh, was that because you were returning to the scene of the crime? I was no, no. I was oh no. Okay, driving by. Okay, driving by, and there was very clearly a, kind of so you don't re- you was, don't remember uh, killing him. As I, was a no. man, a woman, a child. It was a man. It was a, here we it was a man. <laughs> it was a man who was who was shot. Yeah. Oh, a God. shot man. How do you know he was shot? How do you because yeah. I saw his brains blown out of his face because he did it because he did could it, have been bludgeoned. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's true. He kind of detective hit. are you? Fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. Well, um, that's a that's a fun story. Did it did it did it completely and totally traumatize you, or were you already hardened to that sort of thing? Uh, no, it didn't. I don't know why it didn't. That's disturbing. Were you erotically aroused? I was not aroused. Were no, you okay. aroused? Be honest. No, you can be no, honest on on a podcast. I felt. No, felt no. I felt sad. So I felt too. sad for the person okay. who was the recipient okay. of that. Don't lie. You didn't give that. a shit. You didn't give a shit. Did you? I didn't care. No, you were amused, and I you had did. something to brag about. I definitely, on a podcast I definitely was not am, was not amused. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! You guys already knew about this. I've told no, you I've seen dead bodies well, of course, before. But this is also for, been amused. By the way, you and I, Charlie and I, walked in and saw a dead oh, body, we saw while, a dead body while, while we're shooting what? while we're shooting in Philly. What? Yeah. Yeah. Tell me that. Well, I don't remember you know, that. Oh, I, was, just, I vaguely remember that. This that was, was early on. Great. This was season three. Okay. And we were shooting in Kensington, which is oh. A is, lovely neighborhood, but yeah, how beautiful. do we describe it? It's, it's, it's tough. It's, it's, it's bad. It's, yeah, it's rough. <laughs> it's, it's a little rough. It's not doing hot. It's a little rough. And uh, costumes, right? was like, hey, your costume change. We're switching from scene to scene. They're like, your costume change for the other scene is in that little house. And we must have gotten the wrong house. So Rob and I walked we into just the house. Walked, Wait, you just walked we into just a walked house? into a house. The door was open, Jesus though, Christ. I think. Yeah. I think the door was open. And there was like a dad... Uh, Teenager, yeah, oh. in, a, in a casket, in a casket. Oh, oh, God. In a casket. Oh, okay, good. In a, Jesus, well, in, in, a, in a open. No, casket. That, but that's better than just yes. finding some yes. kid like splayed out on yes. the couch. Yes, yeah, yeah. He'd been <laughs> done up. I shouldn't laugh about this, but it was, you know, we're looking back on it. It's, it's amusing. <laughs> Rob's laughing. He's Does holding it, his left. Cut, cut this. No, 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 no. Cut that, cut that. Cut that, cut that. No, 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 no. It was a dead person. It was a fucking dead kid. Okay, yeah, yeah. Don't cut it, don't cut it. Don't cut it, don't cut it, don't cut it, don't cut it, don't cut it. No, there's a dead kid, and then Rob and I are like, uh, where's our costume? What is happening? We didn't know what the fuck was going on. We just walk in, There's and I'm like, Charlie, did you see that? He's like, yeah. And then there's a dead kid in the room, dead guy. Yeah, like uh, oh, maybe man. like a guy in his twenties or something, and maybe not dead. I mean, I we didn't take his pulse. I mean, maybe he was in a coffin. For he was. A, he was in a coffin. I mean, he didn't look good. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And, oh uh, boy, he didn't look wow. that bad. And did you have any feelings about that? Were you, or were you already by that time again? You know, just a little too sort of dead inside. I was. I was definitely confused, mostly confused right. as to why we More were in the situation anything. that we were in. Belatedly amused, you know, like not amused, well, not in the amused moment, in the moment, terrified yeah. in the moment, and then after the fact, being you know like. That was odd. Yeah. That is well, I'll tell you the the uh, the body that I've. The body that really the, bo- the, the body, bodies we found the, the body, body that really the got body me. that I found in Fairmount Park was not amusing, but there was an amusing anecdote that, that is associated with it, where okay. I called the police, as you do when you find a dead human corpse, right? And the cop came over, and he was across the street when so we had crossed the street. And I was just standing there and I'm looking at the body and he pulls up. He's like, hey, you want to call him? Like, yeah. He's like, what do you want? I'm like, there's a dead body over there. <laughs> what do you want? He looks at it. He goes, nah, that's just a bunch of clothes. And I was like, no, that's a, that's a body. I went over to it and I saw it as his And head. I'm telling you, <laughs> <laughs> it's a bunch of clothes, young man. Nah, it's a, just a bunch of clothes. I'm like, no, 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 it's not a bunch of clothes. It's not. And he goes clothes, over to it and clothes. I fucking shit you not. And I have a witness, Chris Murray was with me. Chris Murray and I are watching this and the cop picks up a stick and he pushes the clothes around to see the body. And then he comes back over and he goes, ah, that's a dead body. <laughs> I was like, hey, yeah. that's what you yeah. do when the gang finds a dead guy. You yeah, poke him with the uh, Actually, you poke sir, with the stick. it's both. It's a dead body and a bunch of clothes. And yes, it's, 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 it's yeah. we'll, we'll Ooh, that. That's very sad.
I got a question for you guys. Do you have any particularly amusing underage drinking stories of your own? Or how about this, more specifically, uh, Charlie, do you remember the first time you ever got drunk? Or the first time you ever drank? Uh, I don't, not necessarily remember the first time I ever drank, but I do remember the first time that my buddies and I got like our hands on a bunch of beer. What you know, happened? I think there was like sips of beers here and there that I can't remember, but uh -huh. there was a Mormon church down the street from me and there was never anyone there because I don't think there's a lot of Mormons in Rhode Island. Mm -hmm. There was like um, like a pit with like machines, like air conditioner units and things that we were like, well, no one's going to see us down there. This will be a great place to get drunk <laughs> into a pit. Yeah. So somehow <laughs> we, we got our hands on like a- Jolly was going this pit. Yeah. Yeah. Like a, like a 24 pack or whatever of, of Natty Lights. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we got, we got down in the pit. And we just got hammered, son, on those natty lights. Oh the, yeah, give us the accent. Yeah. Come on, we love. Oh, yeah. I love it. I just <laughs> did. And then, um, and then it's like uh, it. we we're just down there uh, drinking beers, you know, me and the boys. What was that experience like for you? Were you like, oh wow, I really like this, or were you like, oh wow, I'm just dizzy, I don't feel well? How did it? But what, how did you react to it? I think actually that was the first time we had a good time. Like I think there was other scenarios. I've been in scenarios where I had like a beer there. I was like nervous about getting sick or whatever really always scared to get sick was my L. Oh. <laughs> so it kind of held me off on drinking for a while. Like sick as in like, oh, I'm going to drink too much and throw up like yeah, I've seen in the yeah, movies? Yeah, I was terrified to throw up. Because you've seen up. that in the movies or because you'd felt it? No, because I knew that was something that could happen. Uh -huh. But yeah, I don't, I don't recall. I do remember my one friend, my youngest friend, who's too young to be with us drinking, uh, getting very sick from Ooh, drinking yeah. too much. And yeah. that, and I felt <laughs> guilty about that. I still feel guilty about it, to tell uh, the truth. To, uh, okay. Well, I yeah, think you can let that bit. one go, buddy. I think you can let that one go. No, no, no. I was the oldest, you know, I feel, you know. Yeah, you felt that responsibility. A little sure. bit, a little bit. Rob, what about you, man? Well, do you remember the first I, time you ever got drunk? I want to say, I appreciate you trying to find some structure to put into these podcasts, because I, I- I'm just I, having fun, buddy. I, <laughs> You know, somebody's got to keep this train on the rails. You know what I mean? Otherwise, uh, yeah, I, I'll tell you what. The first time I got really, really drunk was at Lemon Hill, and I know exactly what we were doing. We we're drinking St. Ides. Oh, forties. Yeah. Wow. Because you know, you're like, you know, I, it was just a huge part of the culture at the time because we were all watching like gangster rap videos and shit. And you'd well, see, it's also like, more bang for your buck. They're higher in alcohol content. They are, but take I never them understood. Your hands and uh... you would get they would get warm. So unless you drank them yeah. really fast, yeah. yeah. So we drank that St. Ides really fast, and I drank two of them and i probably Oof. weighed 102 pounds oh my god and i got violently ill and we took the subway we had to take a train and then the, and then the elevated train like the subway and puked all over the train oh, oh, all over the train how old and were you 13 uh, guys no uh, listeners, it's too young it's too young way uh, too young listeners if you get a chance go online and try to look at some uh, younger pictures of rob McElhenney. there is a great youtube video of him in an anti-smoking ad where he looks about 13 or 14 years old and i believe you were what 20 21 21 yeah 21 <laughs> the so, guy didn't hit puberty until he was in his mid-20s yeah it took wow. a while took a minute took a minute yeah. so like basically he hit puberty and then was like okay now i can write a show yeah because now it shaped I can show my, my entire personality, I think. Right. Puberty, hitting you know, puberty uh, at like, no, no. No, not hit, hitting not puberty. Not hitting puberty till I yeah. was like 17 or 18. Angry and overcompensatory. A lot Dude, I of cannot wait. Is it good? Is it good? To, I cannot wait to hit it. It's yeah. fun, right? Like you're going to uh, it's It's a transition. The voice, has, the voice drops. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. ah, I can't it wait. It has its ups and downs. I cannot wait. No, I don't think if those hormones haven't kicked in uh, by now, Charlie. They're, they're coming. Ever, I don't think you got them. I just don't think you have whatever organs produce those things. <laughs> um, you can eat more leeks. Are you guys going to ask me my, my story? No, That's was, fine. No, moving on. I was, <laughs> um, I was hoping that you were going to ask us to ask us. I, I was trying to get Charlie's actually, attention, but he was doing it naturally, and it was great. I couldn't. I, yeah. <laughs> It's it was, funny because I, I I was not at all gonna ask you. Me I know you weren't. I know you weren't. That's why I brought it up because I was like, these fucking guys are so no. focused on themselves. They're not no. gonna. No, they don't honestly, even give a shit. No. It's not that I didn't care. Yeah, well, that's true. I feel like we just finished his story. We were just. It was. That, no, that it, it, totally, totally. I was. I he was, saw the. He saw the writing on the wall. Well, he, we were we were transitioning out. Yeah. yeah. Glenn, when was the first time you went out and got and and had some drinks and got drunk? Oh gosh, it's funny that you should ask. Wait, yeah. I want, if, we're, if we're telling stupid stories from when we were underage, yeah, which is the okay the theme of the that is the this theme episode. Of the episode. Sure, can you tell the story about when you hung yourself oh, by boy. accident? Because oh, this is God. the dumbest thing I've ever heard a person. Yeah, do. that's right. I've forgotten this. This so, one is insane. I've forgotten it. I've yeah. forgotten it. <clears throat> 
I was on a church camp. It was a two week long church camp and it was actually really, really fun. And it was out in the woods and you know, we were in bunks and it was super fucking great. Anyway, there so, was this prayer what? groups and games and hangings. <laughs> uh, yeah, most of it was fun. And then there were moments where they were preaching at us and it was like, well, this is, I'll tolerate this because the rest of it's fun. Yeah. There was a barn on the grounds. It was like an old barn that I think was probably there from before this was even a camp. And the barn was decorated with all kinds of old timey Western stuff, right? Like skeletons and things and, you know, whatever. All kinds of like barn equipment and shit. <laughs> I don't know shit about barns. Uh, but there was also, a, with the, in one spot, I, I, I shit you not, God, no, why was this there? I don't know. There was a noose hanging from the ceiling, okay? And so me and my buddy thought, you know what would be really funny? Let's jump up, let's grab the noose, and let's hold it and make it look like we're hanging, right? And so he did it, and I was like, ha, ha, that's really funny looking, and then I did it, and he was like, ha, ha, that's really funny looking. And then he did it again. And I was like, hey, let me go get somebody and and we'll be like, I'll be like, oh shit, Josh like hung himself. Oh my God. Yeah, funny stuff, guys. And so <laughs> I went and I got somebody. I was like, you gotta come in here. It's awful. Josh is hanging. He hung himself. And so I, you know, run in with the person and then Josh would be there like hanging from the thing from his hands, but under his neck. And, you know, with a big goofy look on his face, like so that you know right away that it's not real. It was a joke. So then I did it and Josh ran and got somebody. Glenn hung himself, Glenn hung himself. <laughs> And we did this back and forth like quite a few times. And then at one point, like he came running in with somebody and my hands were by my side. And I was hanging from the noose from my neck. And he actually shit his pants. He told me this later. He was like, dude, when I saw that, poo poo actually came out of my butt and I shit my pants. <laughs> like he actually shit his pants. <laughs> So because his friend killed him. Because he thought his friend started oh, yeah. fucking. It. So he ran. He runs over, and I don't know how he was able to do this because it was pretty high off the ground. He moved a table under me, and then he grabbed me by my legs. Somehow hoisted me off out of the noose. I fell and slammed against the table. He told me this later. I slammed my head against the table, and then he ran and got help. And while he was gone, I woke up. And I remember it's like, you know that feeling when you get up too fast and you kind of it goes black for a second and then everything goes back and you feel like you're going to pass out. It was like that, but times a million. And I finally came to and I was in a room laying on a table alone. I had no fucking idea where I was or what had happened. And long story short, I was fine. They took me to the doctor and I was like, what happened? Like I had my, I was holding onto a thing and he goes, oh, you, you pressed on a nerve or cut off an artery in your you neck. You cut off your, uh, yeah, your carotid, carotid ar arteries. Yeah, yeah so it's I think like I, I choked someone. myself out. Yeah. I choked myself out and then my arms just dropped. I mean, if Josh hadn't come in. Yeah, he saved your life. He saved my life. Praise Jesus. Praise <laughs> like for you guys good good experience yeah i fucking nailed it was that, nailed it was high school we were thriving in high school no nah, i don't know i didn't feel does like anyone was... thrive in high school somebody does somebody has a great oh time. oh yeah there were yeah man i had fun in high school but it, the puberty yeah. thing was tough but then once yeah. i did catch up like my senior year of high school i had a good time did people mm. think you were somebody's like little brother I did that very classic thing where when you are insanely insecure, you completely... You become very gregarious. Yeah, you're like, I, I became you like know. really seemed like self-confidence, which was just like arrogance, which was masking. And why is it that when once you did go through puberty, that didn't go away? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, because it became an indelible part of my personality. Ah. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I don't think you can scrape that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I'm still, I'm working on it. And Glenn, high school for you, you were you were like middle of the pack. You like got a lot of friends, not so many friends. Uh, I had I I was got I the say, girls. What were not was not getting the girls. When Glenn was a senior in high school, his girlfriend was a freshman. No, that's not true. She, she was, was a sophomore. Sophomore, I was close, pretty close. Yeah, pretty close. Yeah, it's okay. Um, okay. High school kids should be. Able she to was my too. first love, Rob. So go ahead and make fun of it all you want. I really love that girl. I wasn't making fun of it at all. I feel I like you were. It out. I feel like you were. There's that obnoxious fucking thing that you never grew out of. Um, I don't know. I no, no more coffee for you, man. Me? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you gotta, you're going dark, man. Let's no, no, I, I like it. I, I know, mean, it's he, good. He, it's well, good. it's like, uh, he's bipolar. It's a roller coaster. Yeah, it's a roller coaster. Ride. Well, I told you guys I, I think I might be mildly bipolar. Yeah. Yeah. 
All right, would you rather me go drop into the depression phase? No, 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 no. no, 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 no. no. Let's okay. keep the mania. No. Okay, all right. Let's go. Uh, Let's go the, you know what we should do? We should have a segment of the mm-hmm. podcast where we try to guess which part Glenn's at. Is he at the mania right. or the depression? Or am I at the fulcrum or am mm. I at the, right. I don't know. I had a good time in high school. I was definitely not like the most popular kid at all or even close, but I wasn't unpopular either. I, I managed to, to kind of skate by, but I, I remember me and my closest friends, Jody and Mark, our whole thing was we liked hanging out with everybody. When like the jocks were having a party, we'd go to that party. And if like the, um, you know, the kids who listened to The Cure and shit, when they would have a party, we went to that fucking party because they were fun as shit too. We just wanted to go to all the parties, basically. We wanted to go to all the parties and we liked the girls in every single segment of the population in school. We just we just wanted to hang out, man. What like, year did that start for We just like wanted junior everybody- Junior year or sophomore year you were going to Sophomore the year. Yeah, sophomore, sophomore year. year. Yeah, sophomore year, right away. Here's a fun fact too. Glenn told me the name of his high school sometime in early 20s. And he told me the name and I couldn't believe it. I thought he was joking. <laughs> I could not believe that this was the name of his high school. It still and is. And then he, that's crazy. And that he couldn't understand why I couldn't believe that the name of his high school is the name of his high school. Glenn, well, do you want to reveal? Rob, they didn't do a good job. I'll put school. it this way. Growing up in Montgomery, Alabama, they didn't exactly do a good job of teaching us the realities of the uh, what went on in the Civil War. Right. You know, they, they, I don't think it, right. you know, it's not a very proud history in right. many ways in Alabama. Right. You know, And that's not me. Look, I mean, that's I, just. But at the time, you had no idea even who the guy was, right? As, I'm not, a, I, I will admit. You were 100, I, not 100%. No, sure. no, I, I knew who he was, but I hadn't really put much thought into it. And, and, and I am admittedly, when it comes to any subject in this world, the worst at history, without a doubt. Without a doubt. I never cared about history. I hated history. Never found it fucking interesting. Always found it boring as shit. So there's a lot of shit that I did. So Jim Crow Academy prep. <laughs> Pretty close. Oh my God. How did you guys? Maybe worse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe worse. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Jefferson Davis <laughs> High School. <laughs> Charlie, you have anything to say about that? You don't know who he is either. No, that's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, he's like, you guys weren't paying attention at all. Uh, in, 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 in history? No. I, pay, I didn't pay attention so in I history I pay attention at all. and I will hear it. I will learn it. I will understand it. I will walk out the door and delete all the files because they're just weighing me down, man. It's boring. I, I got shit to do. You know, yeah, like I can't be going around like thinking about every single name and date. It's crazy. <laughs> no, I'm encountering enough people in my life that I actually interact with that I need to know their names. I don't need to know a I'm guy's name. I'm walking out of the classroom. Some dude's trying to fucking throw me in a bush because I'm short. And I'm like... And you're wait a second, wait a second. I remember the names and dates of every person in the Civil War. <laughs> right. Like, and that's that just, not going to serve me. No, no, no. You're going to get thrown deeper into the bush. Yeah, yeah. For knowing so I got to be thinking, like, I'm constantly strategizing don't, out there. Just don't know stuff, nerd. Yeah, exactly. It makes me feel small. <laughs> yeah. That's and then I dangerous throw you in. for me, sack. Yeah. Fa- facts. See, I didn't even get the word facts right. <laughs> Came out sacks. This has been fun, guys. I really enjoyed taking this trip down memory, memory lane with you. Oh, for oh. fuck's sake. Oh. That's the coffee wearing off. That's the coffee wearing off. God damn it. I only get I get this like little short window of time where I'm at full operational speed and then it just all falls off. And then off. so what you go, you go zero to ten and then mm-hmm. ten to zero. Yeah, it's all yeah. day for me, baby. Yeah. I think I you go like from like zero into the green. Mm-hmm. And then mm-hmm. into the red for a minute. Right, I, I red line. And yeah. then somewhere lower than zero. I, well, yeah, because I've burned myself out, haven't yeah, I? I think so. Yeah, I'm low I'm, on, I'm I'm low on gas, I'm, I'm low on oil. Yeah. And, uh, you know, everything starts rubbing. Well, what's the oil in this scenario? Because the gas is the caffeine. The gas is the caffeine, the oil is the cocaine. Okay. <laughs> okay. It really lubricates things. Rob, do you have any closing words for us? Uh, would you like to say something inspirational to our audience? <laughs> No? Okay. What? Uh... Uh, Charlie, <laughs> would you like to lift people up before they... Sure. Um, look, you, you got to take life day by day. That's you know, advice. just get out there and, and just just worry about today. Don't worry about too much tomorrow. Yeah. And... Uh, and uh, Chin up. Chin up, mm-hmm. you know, and uh, believe in yourself and... Uh, you know, the, the podcast thing. Unless you're an idiot. <laughs> unless you're an idiot, in which case, learn something before you believe in yourself. Because if you're a fucking idiot, you really shouldn't mm. believe in yourself. You should believe in the person who's not an idiot. Guys, this episode is brought to you by education. Education. Fucking please get one. 